My name is Simon. It was a Friday night and I was really looking forward to tonight's game. I'm a quarterback in my local high school football team and my girlfriend is on the cheer team. There was a lot of stress this week between my girlfriend and another member of the team, Sarah, but thankfully all their trouble has been sorted out. My girlfriend Louise can be very high strung at times. I hadn't seen my girlfriend since yesterday. I got into a huge fight with a guy and when it was over I just saw my girlfriend cry and run away. There must be something wrong with her phone because when I tried to call all I got was static. I was cheating on my girlfriend with Sarah but my girlfriend never approached me about it so I wasn't certain that's why they were fighting. And I know my girlfriend and she would definitely approach me. It was time to kick off and I was hyped up. We were playing our rival school, Moontown High School. Our team, Lime Street High School, were on top of their game this season, thankfully. But tonight's game was very important. The game started off very rough indeed. There were guys kept running for me and it was like they were targeting me. To make matters worse, I had butterfingers cause the ball just fell out of my hands once I caught it. These guys seemed to really have it in for me. I was exhausted at half time and when I walked into the dressing room, everyone ignored me. I didn't know what was happening. Suddenly I went out on the field and waved at my girlfriend and she was ignoring me also and just started cheering with the rest of her team. It was after the game I felt like I was having a nightmare when my teacher got up to speak to everyone. Okay everyone, it was a decision made by the school council that we play this game in memory of Simon and even though we were on the edge of calling it off, we decided to play the game in Simon's memory. He was such a great student and great player. I tuned the sound of my teacher out as now I remembered getting hit by a yellow school bus running across the road to my girlfriend so excited to see she was talking to Louise. I tried for weeks to get them to be friends again and when I finally did I got hit by a school bus. But it was then I remembered a few weeks ago we were messing with a new kid in school who was into witchcraft and said if we wanted something to happen we needed to sacrifice something we love. I then realized I made a pact with a new student to my girlfriend and Sarah be friends again. Then I walked up to my girlfriend and Sarah speaking. I couldn't believe what I heard my girlfriend say. I swear I was so angry at him cheating with you I didn't even realize I was going to push him in front of a bus. I didn't even see it coming. What if there was CCTV? I was wondering why I didn't remember her pushing me. Then the student from my school walked up to me and said, Don't worry, this was all mapped out for you. Don't you see? I died too, but came back to life. I was shocked wondering what he meant. Then suddenly I could hear voices and see lights. When my vision came around I noticed there were doctors standing over me. He said, Welcome back kid, you're a fighter. My girlfriend came in a couple of minutes later with Sarah. My girlfriend started crying and took my hand. She whispered, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I replied, it's okay. I told my girlfriend a few weeks later when I recovered about my memories of playing the game. She said there was no game, it was called off. The strange guy from school kept telling me that he was messing about coming back to life. But after researching him online, I learned that he was brought back to life after being clinically dead after drowning. He was hailed as a miracle boy. The drowning happened a year ago. When I approached him about it, he told me it would be better to forget the whole thing because when he decided to tell people about the sacrifice etc, they just thought he was crazy. The boy looked confused. 
Then I got a phone call from my mum telling me that my girlfriend was hit by a truck. I had then realised why the boy looked confused. Then he looked shocked. He said, More than likely she hadn't known what the sacrifice would be. I got angry with the boy and shouted, What do you mean? Then my girlfriend walked up to me. She hadn't realised she had been killed. The boy said, You can see dead people. That's the thing about this. My girlfriend smiled and said, What's wrong? I had then realised. The reason I came back to life was because my girlfriend wished for me to get better, not knowing that she would sacrifice herself. My name is Jason. It was a cold, damp morning, and I was walking to school. I was running late, and I didn't want to get any trouble of my teacher, so I picked up pace as I walked down the street towards my school. I got a start when suddenly an elderly woman walked up to me and gave me a strange look. I looked at her, wondering what she wanted. She spoke. Hey there, young man. Don't look so afraid. I was wondering, did you see my handbag anywhere? I must have dropped it along this pathway. I looked along the footpath, in front and back, and said to her, I'm sorry, I haven't come across any bag, but I hope you find it. She gave me another strange look, then said, Okay, thanks for your help. I told the lady, no problem. Suddenly, an elderly man appeared in front of me. He gave me another strange look. Hello, I was just going to ask you, did you by any chance come across a stray dog? My eager beaver escaped the leash. I found it strange, as I couldn't see the man carrying any leash. I said, no, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't come across any dog. The man said, are you sure? I replied, feeling anxious that the man was so intense looking. Yes, sorry sir, I'm sure. I was about to go when the man said, Why are you in such a hurry? I told him I was in a rush to school. The man looked towards my school, then moved his head close to me and said in a weird voice, Be careful. We tried to meet you sooner, but we couldn't cross over. I wondered what he meant by that. He walked past me, and I was too stunned to say anything. As I approached my school, I could smell smoke and fire, and all the kids and teachers were running out screaming. It was an accident in the kitchen, apparently, and the whole place was ruined. Lots of kids and teachers suffered very bad injuries and third degree burns. Luckily, no one was killed. I was watching TV on the couch, and my dad was on his laptop. He smiled at me and said, Hey, look at this. I finally have a photo of your great-grandparents from all my hard work tracing our family tree. And would you believe your great-grandma was a psychic? When dad showed me the screen, I froze in fear when I saw that my great-grandparents were the man and woman who delayed me going to school. It all hit me now. My grandma was psychic and knew the school would be ruined by a fire. They were delaying me to save my life. It all made sense now. When granddad said we tried to meet you sooner, but we couldn't cross over. They saved me, but tried to save everyone from getting injured. But they could not move their spirit over from the other side on time.
Jerry was eight years old when he was in class one day, as usual drawing his favourite types of cartoons. They always were horror cartoons. They were drawings of witches and monsters, even when it wasn't Halloween. He fit right in when it was Halloween, because the other kids were interested in the spooky stuff then. But he didn't forget the times they laughed at him. He promised himself he would have the last laugh. It was Halloween night 15 years later, and there was a school reunion. Jerry couldn't believe his luck, the school reunion falling on a Halloween night. Jerry was on his own most of the night during the party, apart from some classmates walking up to him and saying hi, probably feeling guilty for how they treated him in school. Everyone was enjoying themselves and were dressed in different Halloween costumes. He had to admit to himself he was rather pleased to be at a Halloween party because he was never asked to any party as a kid. When the party was over and they were outside of the school was when Jerry shot them, saying to himself, You were laughing at my crayon drawings, now I'll be laughing at your chalk outlines. The next morning, Jerry smiled, looking at the crime scene tape and chalk outlines of where he shot them dead. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content.